Now, as you know, I like to focus on hypocrisy and double standards on this program too. I mean, it's got to be called out, doesn't it? Just because it's all too common doesn't mean we stop calling it out. Otherwise, we might as well all give up. So let me share something about the woman who has been chosen as Victoria's next governor. Professor Margaret Gardner is an academic. At the end of the month, she'll become the King's representative in Victoria and she's a Republican. Yep, as a Republican, she believes the British monarchy, nor any other monarchy for that matter, should have no role in our country's constitution or democratic affairs. Yet she will take a prestigious, highly paid job that comes with a grand house, chauffeur-driven cars, servants, deference and a sense of his history as the representative of the monarch, of King Charles III, who approved her appointment, by the way, a person and position she believes should not preside over Australia as our head of state. That's just hypocrisy, isn't it? That's living a double standard. That is saying one thing and doing another. But there's always a way to rationalise it, isn't there? I am actually... Um, I'm a Republican, personally, uh, but I recognise that we are living currently in a constitutional monarchy and we will do so until such time as the people decide otherwise. Look, and to be scrupulously fair, this is hardly a new thing, right? Governor Gardner will not be the first to dance this two-step. I reckon the first, this first become a, became a thing uh, back in the 80s when Bob Hawke gave Bill Hayden the consolation prize of the Governor-General's gig, and Hayden was a lifelong Republican, of course. And there have been plenty of others since. Former Labor leader Kim Beasley was the Republican Governor of Western Australia until very recently, and on it goes. Quentin Bryce even supported the idea of a republic in a speech while she was Governor-General. Talk about have your cake and eat it too. So let's be clear about these jobs. The Governor-General's website describes the role as being His Majesty the King's representative. The New South Wales Governor's website describes the role of the Governor by saying he or she is appointed by the Sovereign and is his representative in the state. The Governor is the formal head of state of New South Wales. In Victoria, they try to be a little bit cute. Although the Governor is appointed by the King as his representative, the Governor exercises the constitutional power of head of state in Victoria. Yeah, oh, I could put it the other way around, couldn't I, and say that although the Governor exercises those powers, there is no getting around the fact the Governor is the representative of the King in Victoria. So how can someone who is committed to the Republic, who is a committed Republican, take such a role? Isn't this just the elevation of personal opportunity over personal beliefs, of opportunism over values? Isn't it saying one thing and doing another? It doesn't seem to trouble the Premier in Victoria who says he didn't even bother to tell the King that his recommended choice was a Republican. I didn't necessarily broadcast that fact. Uh, there are many different views, many different opinions, but we have constitutional arrangements and we have to choose the very best person uh, at this time. Me, I reckon if you're a declared Republican, it's not too much to ask that, sure, you accept the system as it is, but you draw the line at being the king's representative. You draw the line at being the very instrument of an arrangement you oppose. Here's the tip. I would refuse to serve as Governor or Governor-General because I'm a Republican. On the other hand, my wife is less antagonised by the monarchy and she's eminently qualified and I'd make a bloody good first bloke. No, just joking, just joking. Honestly, stand by your principles, people.